Looking for magic cards or magic carps? TCG Player has all the singles you need to upgrade your decks. Import a list with mass entry and let the card optimizer do the rest. Use my affiliate link down below when shopping and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl gameplay video. Today I was challenged by my supporters on Patreon to build a deck around Pia Nalar, Consul of Revival. The 2 mana 2 3 legendary human artificer says Thopters we control have haste, and whenever we play a land from exile or cast a spell from exile, we get to make a 1 1 Thopter artifact creature token with flying. And I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with our removal and interaction, where we have Curse of Silence to delay the opponent's commander, and then a lots of spot removal here with Portable Hole, also has a tiny bit of exile synergy throughout the deck, Source to Plowshares, of course, excellent, and then plenty of burn spells, including Frostbite, which is why we have those snow covered basics in the mana base, a Lightning Bolt, Shock, Strangle, and then a Voltage Surge at one mana. Then at 2 mana we move on to a Braid, which can also hit artifacts. The Shield Breaker also has quite a bit of synergy with Pia, since we can first use the 1 mana adventure to destroy an artifact, and then play the 2 mana 2 one, and since we're playing an adventure from exile, it will also trigger Pia and make an extra Thopter token. And the same is true for other adventure creatures, such as the Bone Crusher Giant, where we can first stomp for 2 damage, and then play the 4-3 joined by an extra Thopter if we have a Pia in play. Then there's a Lightning Helix to deal 3 and gain 3 at instant speed, and a Rip Apart can also hit artifacts or enchantments at sorcery speed. There's a Demon Bolt, and all the Fortel cards also have great synergy with Pia, since we can first pay 2 mana to exile them, and then if we play them from exile, in this case for just a single red to deal 4 damage, we also get to make a Thopter token. And then Nahiri's Warcrafting can also potentially exile a card that we get to play and make an extra Thopter. Conclave Tribunal we can easily convoke by tapping a few Thopters, and Elspeth Conqueror's Death is quite powerful when we have this many Planeswalkers in our deck that we can bring back from the graveyard potentially. And then for our next category we have a bunch of mana artifacts, where there's Mox Amber to immediately make an extra mana if we control a legendary creature or planeswalker, pretty good with a 2 mana commander. Then Springleaf Drum lets us tap an untapped creature to make 1 mana of any color, so we can also turn Thopters into extra mana sources. Arcane Signet, Cold Seal Heart, Guardian Idol, and Mindstone, the typical 2 mana ramp artifact, now also joined by Ornithopter of Paradise, which is a Thopter, so it does gain haste with Pia out, so we can immediately tap it for mana, so it essentially only costs 1 mana to deploy, and then it's also Thopter for additional Thopter synergies, as we'll see later. And then Ashnod's Altar is also quite synergistic if we can make a few Thopters and then sacrifice them to add two colorless, so it makes it easy to quickly deploy our hand or cast a bunch of spells from exile. And Inspiring Statuary is also great, saying non-artifact spells we cast have Improvise, so now we can potentially tap our Thopters to help pay for some of our spells. And then we've got a whole bunch of ways to exile cards from the top of our deck usually, and then be able to play those cards from exile to enable Pia, and I've split them up into the one-shot effect, and then the repeatable exile effects so we can keep making more and more Thopters. And in the one-shot category, we've got the research desk, can actually use it twice. Once we can play it for one mana, pay one mana, tap and sacrifice to exile the top two cards, and we get to choose one that we get to play until the end of our next turn, and can also be unearthed for one and a red to do it a second time. Synthesizer we can also potentially exile two cards with if we pay two and a red to make a samurai token and do it a second time. Then Invasion of Mercadia is not your typical exile effect, but since it's a battle it also synergizes with Pia, because once we transform the Invasion of Mercadia after dealing 4 damage to it and get to Flame right, then we're casting a card from exile when the battle transforms, so that can also make an extra Thopter token, and then the Flame Rite's also quite synergistic with a deck that can go wide with a bunch of 1-1s, as we can pump them up after discarding a card and making 2 additional 1-1s on the ground. We've got Reckless Impulse to exile the top 2 that we get to play until the end of our next turn. Rob the Archives has Casualty, so we can sacrifice a creature to copy it and potentially exile the top 4 cards, but we have to play those on this very same turn, so we don't have that same timing window as we do with Reckless Impulse or the new Rents Resolve, where we can still play them in our next turn, which gives us a bit more time to deploy them. And then Light of the Stage is similar to Reckless Impulse and Rents Resolve, can be cast for a single red mana if we enable Spectacle, otherwise costs us 3. And then Invasion of Kaltheim is another battle that can transform and make a Thopter token, but this one can also let us play lands or cast spells from exile after putting those there from our hand. And then there's Showdown of the Skulls, which can also exile multiple cards that we get to play over the course of two turns, and then we also get extra plus one counters during the second and third chapters. And March of Reckless Joy can also exile multiple cards at once that we have two turns to deploy. 
And then we get to the repeatable exile effects, including some cheap creatures, like Ragavan, of course, a great on turn one. We've got Dark Dweller Oracle, which also synergizes very nicely with the Thopter tokens, which we can now sacrifice to play the top card of our library this turn, so that can set up a very nice engine. We've got the Magmatic Channeler, can tap, discard a card to exile the top two, and we get to choose one of them that we get to play this turn. We've got a Robber of the Rich when it attacks, can also potentially exile cards from the opponent's library that we get to play. Burgi is especially useful if we play the Horn of Bounty, where we can discard a card to exile the top two, and we may play both of those cards this turn. We've got Curse of Hospitality, where we enchant the opponent, and now our creatures gain trample if they attack the opponent, and we get to exile cards from the top of the opponent's library that we get to play until end of turn, fixing our mana in the process. So if we hit the opponent with multiple Thopter tokens, we get to exile multiple cards, which can also be very fun. Got the Blade Reforged, exiles the top card when it attacks that we get to play until end of turn, and whenever we exile a card it also picks up an extra plus one counter. Got the Professional Facebreaker, making treasures if we hit the opponent, also very good with our evasive thopters, and then we can sacrifice treasures to exile the top card that we get to play until end of turn. Got a Valakut Exploration with a Landfall exiling the top card of our library, and if we didn't play the exiled card we at least get to deal a bit of damage to the opponent. And then the Sword of Forge and Frontier has been great, especially when paired with a Flying Thopter, adding the extra protection from red and from green to attack past any blockers. And then if we hit the opponent we get to exile the top 2 card, get to play an extra land for the turn, and of course play that card from exile as well. And then there's Urubrask, where we exile the top of the opponent's library that they're forced to play that turn, and we get to exile an extra card each turn ourselves. And then Itali, once it attacks, can also exile the top card of each player's library that we get to play for free, generating Thopters in the process. Then the next category is called Red Planeswalkers, where we have plenty of Chandras mostly, and the one Jaya as well. And all of these Chandra Planeswalkers also have the ability to exile the top card of our library that we get to play until end of turn, although they're slightly different in the way they operate. Some of them don't allow us to play lands from exile, some of them do. We've got the Dressed to Kill, which can also add mana. The Fire Artisan can deal damage to the opponent if they remove its loyalty counters. We've got Pyromaster, which can deal one damage, maybe prevent the opponent from blocking, but this one also allows us to play a lands from exile. Then a Torch of Defiance can deal four damage, add double red to our mana pool, and can also exile the top card, but we can only play it if it's a non-land card, and we need to be able to play it right away, otherwise we can deal two damage. And then a Jaya can make a 1-1 monk token with prowess, can potentially exile the top two cards with the minus one, we get to choose one that we get to play this turn, and then the minus two can deal damage to an opposing creature equal to the number of attacking creatures we control, it's also very good with a bunch of flying thopters. And then a Chandra Heart of Fire lets us discard our hand to then exile the top three cards of our library that we get to play until end of turn, or we can repeatedly deal two damage. And then at the final category is kind of the miscellaneous, where we have some additional exile and thopter synergies, including the Stonebinders Familiar, which is great here. A 1-1 one -one saying whenever one or more cards are put into exile during our turn, put a plus one plus one counter on the familiar, even if it only triggers once each turn, since this will work very nicely, even if we're unable to play a card from exile. And we can also potentially exile opposing creatures with cards like Portable Hole or Swords to Plowshares, which will also trigger the familiar. And then the Retrofitter Foundry lets us generate service Servo tokens, sacrifice them to make Thopters, and sacrifice Thopters to make 4-4 Construct tokens. But of course with Pia we can skip a few steps and immediately sacrifice Thopters to make 4-4 Constructs, which can also deliver a lot of damage. We've got Yotia Declares War, where we can make an O2 Thopter token, and then we can later potentially tap some number of artifacts to deal damage, and turn one of our artifacts into a 4-4 until end of turn. This also has quite a few synergies throughout. And the Breos Apprentice comes into play with a 1-1 Thopter that will immediately gain haste if we have a Pia out, and we can tap and sacrifice an artifact to either exile the top card of our library that we get to play until end of turn, or we can give one of our creatures plus 2 plus 0 until end of turn. So both modes can be very useful. And then the mana base has a few utility lands, Igancho can deal damage to attackers or blockers, Crucible can make two one ones with haste, Good Shafentunes can be sacrificed to give the team plus one plus one until end of turn, and Castle Embereth we can repeatedly activate to give the team one extra power, and Den of the Bugbear an excellent creature land that will also make extra 1-1 one -one goblin tokens, and then just a lot of red-white dual lands for added mana fixing. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Jetmere Nexus of Revels tokens. Our hand is not ideal for the matchup, although Demon Bolt lines up well against Jetmere. Just gonna 
lack a bit of early pressure to enable light of the stage, and it's going to take a while to play Itali. So I think we take a Mulligan. This is a bit better, still have the Demon Bolt, but now some more useful cards with Guardian Idol to ramp out a showdown. Opponent making two servos. And let's go with Idol. The next one we can play Pia and foretell the Demon Bolt already. We'll only get to make a Thopter once we cast the Demon Bolt for one mana. Could also make the argument for playing Showdown so we can maybe play Pia and the card from Exile in the same turn. But then we won't have a ton of mana to work with, so we're unlikely to get much value from the Showdown. So the longer we wait, the better. So yeah. Play Pia and Fortel. Parallel Lives can double the amount of tokens they generate. And now we get to untap. Can start with Showdown, could also go for Apprentice, Thopter gains haste. Although we might want to get rid of this Parallel Lives as well before it gets out of hand. So yeah, let's go with Apprentice. And then we can still Convoke the Tribunal. And I could keep Demon Bolt available, which is maybe fine. We miss out on an attack for two damage. But getting to Demon Bolt if they play Jetmir could be nice. Can be anointed procession, another enchantment that doubles tokens. And take two. Alright, now is the time for showdown, unless we want a Chandra, which can also deal one damage to a token. So that's not the worst. Sure. Because again, the longer we wait on showdown, the better. Opponent's got a response. Angelic Ascension to turn it into a 4 4. Okay, so that would turn into two 4 4s with the procession, so let's Demon Bolt in response. Make a Thopter. And smash. Now we're out of removal, so Jetmir could be very effective, and of course Procession with three cards in hand is quite scary as well. Migration, that's eight tokens for six mana. Not bad. Okay, Rip Apart deals with the Procession. Can probably afford to Showdown first, and then Chandra takes out a token as opposed to exiling the top card. I think that's okay. Okay, can play a land. And then we could still Lightning Bolt as well. Now we could have also cast a Lightning Bolt at the opponent's face to make an extra Thopter and get in for the most damage, but we might need to keep removal at instant speed to reduce the number of creatures down to 8 so they don't gain double strike with Jetmir. Our opponent doesn't like it that we're dealing with all their enchantments. Do we send in any of the 2 threes? Maybe the Apprentice? Keep Pia back to protect Chandra as well. Sure. I do still want to be quite aggressive here. And then I can hang on to Lightning Bolts, which can also generate a Thopter. Next turn we can maybe activate Castle. Although this way we keep up some instant speed interaction. So yeah, there's Jetmir. Team has Double Strike, so... opponent can just go for Lethal. Don't have the damage to kill Jetmir, so we'll just kill a token instead. So now they lost double strike. Opponent is still hitting us for 21, so we do have to block. But I guess Pia has done enough, or we can just block with a token. And actually prefer blocking the servo in case we find a sword, since the servo 
can still block through the protection from red and green. Play land, make a Thopter. Then Chandra at this point could also exile the top card. Finds a land. And we could rob the archives. Can also use the idol to pump up one of our Thopters with the apprentice. There's a castle. So should be pretty close to lethal here. First off, we'll pump a Thopter, sacking Guardian Idol. Then we can rob the Archives, sacking the Apprentice with Casualty. Showdown gives us more counters. Springleaf is essentially free with Pia, which we can uh, tap for mana. And then, let's see here. Can still strangle a token. And yeah, that's gonna do it. We've got just enough damage between our castle and showdown putting extra plus one counters on the team. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw facing an Itali ramp deck. And I'm not gonna say no to a turn one Ragavan, even if it's on the draw. Got a Vaulted Surge to clear a path. So let's get in there. And just exile the land. Okay, so I can play Pia. No need to play Spring Leaf Drum just yet. Bonon cycles an ancient. Grab the forest. And a Spring Bloom Druid's next. So that can get in the way of Ragavan potentially. Might have to take it out with a Voltage Surge so Ragavan can keep attacking. Foundry's nice too. So if we can get Chandra going to enable Pia. Then Foundry will help us uh, deal a lot of damage. For now, I think Springleaf, Voltage Surge, Kill Druid. And then I'll just attack with Ragavan to keep Pia for Springleaf Drum. And found a Valakut Exploration, which has good synergy with Pia as well. So, yeah, sure. Just cast it here, tapping Pia using two treasures. Make a Thopter. And then we can play Foundry. And immediately transform a Thopter into a 4 4, although we can actually do this end of turn for what it's worth. And now the opponent's exploration is going to work quite well with Pia. Opponent can ramp with a Topiary Stomper, still doesn't block Ragavan. So step one, attack, unless we want to see what the exploration does for us first, which is also reasonable. Just a land. Okay, then um, probably start by attacking. See what Ragavan hits. Zanikar's Royal. I can't quite cast. We have a spring leaf, but no untapped creature, and we have a treasure. So we'll just go with Chandra. Unless, let's see, if I activate this for two mana, make a servo. Then one, two, three, four. We're still one mana short. So, yeah, we'll just play Chandra. And plus. And a demon bolt I wouldn't be able to foretell. Alright, so didn't get the most value out of our exile effects here. But go to Chandra in play, points at 11. And next turn, we can even activate our Den of the Bugbear if necessary. But of course, they could play Natali now, which can quickly stabilize the board. 
Storm the festival instead. Okay. It's a glorious sunrise and a land. So now the Stomper can attack Chandra, although they would take 4 damage in the process. The opponent just goes face. And a Tireless Tracker's next. Okay. Start here. Find a Cold Steel Heart. And a Lance, but can double spell the Lance to enable Pia, so that's being a bit awkward here. So how do we feel about Cold Steel Heart? Make a Thopter. We can play Trinketeer to pump it up. And then we can turn it into a 4-4 later. Okay, pass it back. Bones at 8. At least the exploration is dealing a bit of damage. But the sunrise could also gain 3 life. Time for a tally. And what does it hit? On our side, a sword. Didn't think they'll necessarily have time to equip it. And an Ulvenwald Hydra, that one's pretty good. I guess sword would have been helpful to get past the Hydra. So now our opponent's got two huge creatures on the battlefield to block our 4-4s. Four so, yeah, opponent can easily take over from this stage. We're counting on the damage from Chandra and Exploration to get there. But the Sunrise can start gaining life, which is what our opponent realizes. So, Foundry make a 4-4, four four, since our opponent's got a Reach creature back now. Could channel Crucible still. Don't know if that's all that helpful. Just take our turn. And a Dark Dweller could come in handy. So plus here. Hit a land, so that can finally make a Thopter. Hit another land. Ragavan's not doing much for us anymore. Shieldbreaker could break the sword here. And then if we cast it, we make another Thopter. And then I can sacrifice whichever Thopter or opponent blocks with a Hydra. Do we have enough for lethal if I were to, like, channel this Crucible? Can use a Summoning Sick Creature to tap with a Springleaf Drum. Although these are still just 1-1s. Opponent's got 3 blockers. So we still only have 8 damage going through, I believe. And then plus 1 with the Exploration. Still not quite there, thanks to the life gain. So I think we'll just send the Thopters here. Could also sacrifice to the Dark Dweller, but won't have much mana left. So this seems better. Okay, pass it back. Also have the option of activating Trinketeer at some point. We do have a Chandra on 7 loyalty. So if we get to minus 7, that could just deal 7 damage as well as find a bunch more cards in exile. So our opponent needs to deal with Chandra, preferably without dealing damage to it. Flashback Storm the Festival. So it all boils down to this. A Lance and a Roaring Earth. I don't think that's going to be good enough. They still have two cards left, two mana. And they could make more mana with a Sunrise if necessary. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. A Fire Artisan Ultimate to seal the deal. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Haktos the Unscarred. And while we don't have any white mana, I think our hand's still keepable. We've got the uh, Channeler 
and the Blade or Forge, which can both find additional cards. Turn to Magda. I could strangle or abrade, but we'll just play Channeler and hope to block. It's gonna be a Wily Goblin next. Also makes a treasure to potentially synergize with Magda if they get to 5. And a big spender is next. So 2-1. And uh, yeah, I'll block Magda. Big spender makes another treasure. So now we could strangle the big spender after maybe activating the channeler to try and find white mana. Urobrask might have a hard time attacking in this matchup. Okay, and then probably take the planes here in case we need more snow lines for some reason. Don't necessarily have to take out the big spender, can just play Blade or Forge then attack. And then our blade can help enable Pia next turn. If our opponent rolls a 2 on Haktos, we can still abrade it. So it's important to keep this one in hand. And there's Haktos. And they rolled a 4. So protection from each mana value other than 4. Well, we can still attack past it with the sword, I guess. Although we won't be able to equip it this turn. So that holds our attack with the Blade Reforged. And uh, can maybe try Pia and then activate Channeler. To still play something from Exile. And a land will do, could rob the archives, although I don't have anything I actively want to sacrifice. So sure. And Blader Forged also grows. And then next turn we could play and equip the sword while we keep up a braid during the opponent's turn. And Thopter could attack. Okay, so for now the game's pretty even, but the sword might break it wide open. So can Solfim, of course. Opponent can already make it indestructible if they'd like. Actos has to attack, and Big Spender gets in there too. If we block our opponent makes more treasure, so maybe I should just abrade it now. And I also don't want them to be able to finish off my blade if I block the 2 1, in case they're holding some burn spell. Now what? Play sword, equip, blade or forged. Play a land to make a Thopter. And then I could still technically march for zero just to make a Thopter, or we can pitch some cards to be able to exile more. And then uh, we'll still have next turn to play them. Yeah, why not? Get rid of Strangle and Invasion. Okay, pass it back. And 
if our Blader Forge can connect, we can potentially just close out the game here. But we also have to be careful since Hactos, especially with the Solfim on the battlefield, could represent a lot of damage. Opponent Blitz as a Requisitioner. That one we can block. And the Captain. Okay. So that gets to attack right away. So that's an 8 powered Hactos coming across. Requisitioner makes a treasure, draws. And our opponent found a humiliation to target our Blade of Forged. Yeah, that works. So. Lost all of its abilities, including the ones given by the Sword of Forge and Frontier. So I think even if we move the sword to it again, based on how the layers work, it would still lose the sword's abilities. So if that's the case, start by playing a land, making a Thopter. And then we could try equipping a Thopter instead, or Pia, which can also attack past everyone. And then we have 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. It's not quite enough, so we may have to activate Channeler. Finding a Declares War that I can still cast. And we can read ahead to turn a creature into a 4 4. That could work. Then we still have Frostbite to make an extra Thopter, take out Captain. And attack all out. And that does it. Perfect. Exactly here at the right time. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, Celebrant of Bounty, a ramp deck. So we better be quick since the opponent's late game is going to overpower us. Our hand's not bad, especially the sword could come in handy. So I'll try it. Could use more ways to exile cards to enable Pia, but eventually the sword will do it. And at least we don't have to worry too much about removal. Ornithopter might be the better play now. Could already transform it into a 4-4 with Foundry, although we might prefer the extra mana it provides. Although that being said, if I make a 4-4, next turn I can go with Sword and then turn after Pia plus equip the Sword. That could be powerful. Yeah, let's go for it. Could have also gone with Apprentice, although without a turn to Pia the token doesn't gain haste, so... I think I prefer sword. Hit for four. Opponent's got another ramp artifact. And a beanstalk giant. Okay, so next turn they could have seven mana pretty easily. But we're gonna start connecting with our construct equipped by sword. And then I can still play Pia, but let me tap carefully to leave a red untapped. Okay. So I can play a land, and then play Pia, play another land, make a Thopter. That seems fine. And Thopter turns into another 4-4. Four -four but can do that end of turn. So can our opponent stabilize? Emoti, that one's fine. Cascades in two. We'll follow Haven. So it could have worked out better had they left the land untapped. To then still have two mana afterwards. And a lot of elves, fair enough. 
So yeah, they still cannot block our 6-6. Six, six. Could now also go with an Urabrask. Or we can play Apprentice, and then the token gains haste, can attack. And then, of course, Sword can find more goodies. Might want to keep Urabrask as a follow-up if there is something like a Reverse Rebuke to reset our board. So, sure. And then I'm also fine trading Pia with Emoti at this point, I think. Although, close call. Might make more Thopter tokens to help cross the finish line. 10, 11. I guess I should attack, and then if our opponent takes it, I can maybe finish them off with Lining Helix. Is our opponent just jumping the 4 4? Falls to 6. And a Shock plus a Lightning Helix gets our opponent to 1. So not quite lethal. I guess I should just take out Emoti to be safe. And our opponent has seen enough. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the Blight Dragon that's going to try and poison us to death. And our hand has potential, of course. Turn 1 Ragavan. Can go wrong. Turn to Robber. Do need to find some uh, additional planes, ideally. But uh, Ragavan makes treasures, so hopefully we can uh, connect a few times. Does not look like they have one mana removal. And sure, we'll play Igunjo. In case I need to play Peon next turn already. And found a Duress. Wow. That's an awesome hit. Drown an Icker. So let's have a look right now. And opponent explodes. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems pretty decent. A couple mana artifacts here facing Nahiri, the equipment deck. I can start by fetching a planes. Turn to Cold Steel Heart. And then foretelling a Demon Bolt. Could also be a nice turn where we play Pia and then maybe cast it for one mana to immediately make a Thopter. Turn one Shadow Spear. It's going to be quite good later in the game. I'll name Red here. And a Shrine is next, so definitely something we want to take out before it draws too many more cards, but our opponent's already got a zero mana Bone Saw. So we can play a Frostbite, foretell a Demon Bolt. And that's it. Not the most mana efficient turn, but if I play Pia, foretell Demon Bolt, then opponent gets to draw more with SRAM, which we want to avoid. Could also go Frostbite plus Altar, which is reasonable, although it's going to take me a while to then enable Pia. So I think this needs to happen. And then could go with a more mana efficient Altar here. If I find a land next turn, I could play Pia, Fertel, Demon Bolt, and then in the opponent's turn, cast it for one mana. Still make a Thopter. For now, a Barbed Spike. And there's a land. So that should work. And pass it back. Don't have to kill the Thopter right now, can wait. Maybe your opponent tries to equip it, and it doesn't count as an equipment for Nahiri, which we could also Demon Bolt here before the opponent gets a chance to attack. It's going to be a Dancing Sword next. Okay. Yeah, I think I'll hang on to the Demon Bolt to answer Nahiri. Just take two. And then start by attacking to enable Light of the Stage, as opposed to going for Showdown of the Skulls. Okay, play a land, play Oracle. 
make a couple thopters. And a research desk, which we can still sacrifice in the opponent's turn. But for now, I'll pass it back. Also can't forget about Ashnod's Altar helping us cast Showdown, but I think it's going to be more effective next turn. So there's a 2-mana Nahiri. Although we can take it out for just 1-mana here while making a Thopter. And then end of turn I'll sack Research Desk. And our opponent has seen enough. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a nice hand. Turn one familiar. Turn two maybe Pia. Plenty of removal. And then just need to find a few ways to exile cards. And uh, two Chandras can help there. So the Ojutai Master 3 4. Cannot be countered when it comes to instant sorceries and dragons. And then they can potentially rebound to replay some spells. Okay. Get in for one, and we'll play Pia. The card we really want to resolve is Torch of Defiance, which can not only take out Tygum with a 4 damage, but then the mana ability makes it pretty easy to replay Pia. Opponent's Counter Ray counters it. And Nadar is next. Dies to a rip apart. It is a dragon, which is probably why they're playing it. I doubt they have a big dungeon theme. Sword could be nice too. Although not the relevant colors in this matchup. So let's just keep the board clear. Hopefully our opponent taps out for Tygum, and then we can play Chandra to take it out and untap with a Planeswalker in play. It's just a tap land for now, so no 4 mana Tygum. So maybe we want to bait with Pyromaster as opposed to going for Pia or Torch of Defiance right now. And we would potentially exile the top card just to grow the familiar. That seems reasonable enough. But this may just get countered. Okay, Chandra resolves. And then I think going for the zero ability to grow familiar is still slightly better as opposed to getting one damage and one loyalty. And you never know, could always hit a Mox Amber that we can play for free. All right, it's going to be a Shield Breaker that's going to go to waste here. Have enough mana to play Sword and Equip in next turn. But ideally, we get to deploy another Chandra. It's going to be an Oracle of the Alpha. That one could also die to Chandra. Or we can combine Voltage Surge with the one damage from Pyromaster. So couple of options, but probably want to get Torch of Defiance down while the shields are mostly down. And then I could still add mana here. Or we could, as we said, Voltage Surge plus one damage, and then Chandra could exile. Or we could make mana play Sword, but then we don't get to take out the Oracle. So, close call. I think keeping the loyalty high so we can deal for damage is good. And I think at that point, making mana is also fine. And then we'll just go for the one damage plus voltage surge. And keep the lightning bolt around. Bowden seems to have a response. God's willing. All right, so we'll still Lightning Bolt now. That works out. And hit for two. And now we have double Chandra on the battlefield. Ready to provide a ton of value with Pia, and Sword's going to be great too. Chandra can prevent the opponent from blocking, so it's easier to connect with our Sword. It's going to be an Invasion for two, making two Knights. Fair enough. 
So play sword, equip it is one option, and then prevent one from blocking the other we can kill. Although that does leave Chandra Torch of Defiance vulnerable on the way back, so not ideal. So maybe instead I can add mana, play Pia, exile top card, maybe play it, maybe not. But uh, that way I can start making Thopters to protect my Planeswalkers and a 2-3 also lines up favorably. Okay, Nationals Altar works. Make a Thopter. And then we'll keep our creatures around and just hang back for now. But now with Altar, it's going to be much easier to deploy all the cards we exile if we exile a non land card. And if we exile a land, then uh, Pia gets to make more Thopters for free. At least in the case of Pyromaster, which lets us play cards, Chandra only lets us cast them. So we'll line up some blocks. Don't really expect any mass pump spells, but even if they happen, it's fine. Possible there's just a board wipe incoming. Yeah, depopulates, fair enough. So could make some mana here, but want to make sure to keep Pia on the battlefield so we get to draw an extra card. Not that we were going to be able to use this mana. Just a good habit. Okay, so where do we begin? Could replay Pia to start generating a board presence. And then we can still make a Thopter if we exile a land. And if not, I can play a research desk. Okay, that works. And then declare war, making another Thopter, which does have haste, but of course only zero power. And I could also sacrifice some of these to make mana to deploy the rest of my hand. And uh, not all the way opposed to it. So sure, we can get in with a 1-1 one -one sacrifice, making four mana. And then I can play both Sword and Research Desk, ready to activate it next turn. Okay. And if they take out Pia again, I can sacrifice it, activate the Research Desk. And also can't forget about our Den of the Bugbear, in case we need to make more creatures for the Sword. Also very good with Ashnod's Altar. Chandra can ultimate, giving us an emblem. Just gotta watch out for some of the blue counter spells that can counter activated or triggered abilities, but does not seem like our opponent has one of those, and they explode. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing the first sliver. Well, if we're up against an actual creature tribal deck, this hand isn't bad with a lot of removal. We'll still need to find more synergies with Pia, but there's plenty of those in the deck. So we'll give it a shot. Turn 2 could already play Pia, or we can start ramping with the Mind Stone. Don't really mind the early pressure, since Mind Stone isn't contributing all that much. Opponent's got the Signet, which we can abrade. So now an efficient turn would be Mind Stone into abrade. Perhaps should have played the Battlefield Forge. That way I could have played Chandra, maybe exiled the land and still played it next turn. Although we're likely going to have something else going on. Skyclave Relic, this one's indestructible. Although we can exile it with a Tribunal. But let's start with a Synthesizer. Maybe exile a land with it. Okay, another Chandra. That one I cannot play, sadly, since we don't have enough for red. So, Tribunal it is. And this may mess up the opponent's mana. 
if they're missing red to cast the first sliver. And will also delay by a turn. And dried. So it looks more like a five color good stuff deck as opposed to sliver tribal, that's for sure. Now we could try to combine Chandra with Helix, but once again we're light on red mana to make that happen. So instead we can just play Chandra or activate Synthesizer to start digging. And yeah, maybe I'm okay with activating Synthesizer here. Curse of Silence is a good one. Played from Exile, make a Thopter and name the first sliver. Okay, get in for one in the air. Could also tank with PI if they block, we can finish off the Dried with a Lightning Helix. Seems pretty low opportunity cost. Let damage happen first, and then Helix to finish it off. Okay, and then next turn we can untap with a Chandra. Keep exiling cards to hopefully make Thopters. A Relic of Legends. And a Chandra dressed to kill isn't bad either. Although, once again, only two red sources means I cannot double spell the Chandras. So I think Pyromaster is probably the highest upside here. And I can use the Mind Stone. Don't think I'll be sacking it yet. Thanks, all top card. And a mountain is perfect. Okay. Get a healthy attack in. And now we start diversifying our threats with Planeswalkers. Opponent unable to play their commander. Thanks to our curse, but a Teferi is a good one. If you show remorse, I'll show we'll see what they decide to do. Minus on our token to essentially kill it. And now rip apart another answer to the relic. So this can keep using the exile ability. Could also deal one to Teferi, but a Thopter can just finish it off. Find the Apprentice. So if I go with Chandra, I can make mana and still play both Apprentice and to rip apart. And we can also finish off the fairy for what it's worth. And then I have to be careful with the auto tapper. I guess we can just rip apart first. Okay, that was a beautiful turn. Make two thopters here, both haste. Get in for six. And even if a board wipe happens, we still have our Planeswalkers to hopefully cross the finish line. Farewell. Yeah, that one hurts. Exiles, creatures, artifacts, and enchantments. So that was uh, kind of the worst case scenario there. So now what? Replay Pia. And then maybe adding mana with Chandra. And then we can... Uh, use the zero ability on Power Master, but I don't have to decide on whether or not to make mana. I can uh, still cast a card with Power Master later in the turn. So let's have a look. Okay, land works. You ain't seen nothing yet. And then now could still deal the one extra damage with the first ability, or we can hope to exile a red spell we can cast. With our opponent at 6, I probably shouldn't be too greedy, just go for the 1 damage. That's guaranteed. Give a toast. <laughs> I'd love to. Okay, first liver comes down, cascades in 2. Chromatic Lantern, that's okay. And Sylvala, which we can strangle. So... Opponents at 4. Probably fine to exile the top card, since that guarantees a Thopter. And the march was excellent. So, how much do we march for? X equals, let's say, 4. Still lets me strangle and maybe play something afterwards.
Okay, those are good, and a lightning bolt will just seal the deal here. Awesome. And our opponent explodes, so yeah, some good curve here against a five color good stuff deck with plenty of answers to their early ramp to keep them off balance. And then double Chandra to carry us across the finish line after a farewell. So overall, this uh, Pia deck is incredibly interesting. It's doing something that you don't typically see, especially in red-white, which is often just an aggressive color pair. So having this alternate angle of casting spells from exile is uh, quite appealing to me. But at the end of the day, it's not the most competitive brawl deck out there. The individual card quality isn't as high as in those five color good stuff decks. And the commander also isn't quite as inherently powerful as some other commanders I've featured recently. So hopefully in the long term, we're going to end up uh, facing some of those lower power level commanders when playing Pia. So we don't have to face those higher power decks. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel. And you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.